be the right so that makes 27. So All right, so, so this is, are your, these are your study tips and hints and ways to figure out how I put the test together. Where are you? All right, started. All right, so APES reviewed 2013, study the test, not just what the test claims to test. That's one of the reasons people don't do well on tests, my tests, is because they don't know how to take the test. I should have told you I'd do this at the beginning of the semester, but. Mr. Stackhouse. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> oh. oh, well. Oh, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might go crazy for messing up right All right, so yeah. Monday, May 6th, at 8 o'clock a.m., the counselor's going to give you more details. Uh, you're probably in here in McKeever's room, but they'll give you specifically where you're supposed to be. This is your very first AP test that you're taking. Uh, all the AP tests is the first one. Isn't, isn't the, what is your Yeah. 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 All right, so this is the first AP test you're going to be taking this year because nobody's taking AP chemistry, I don't think. If, no. if you are taking AP chemistry, then you've got to set it up so that you take one at one time or another time because they're offered at the exact same time. Is there a real thing in this school? Nobody takes it. I don't think anybody takes it. What do we do after the test? Because we're at school, do we just head to a different class? or You go home. We go home? All right, so your guidance department can give you, you can tell I made this for the county, um, more information on paperwork and everything. This is where everything comes from. So if I click this, you'll notice all your AP information is here. So all the stuff, if you go to this link right here, I'm giving you all my secrets away. If you don't already know. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. This is where everybody, every AP teacher gets all their questions from. So every time you have an essay question, this is where it comes from. So this, say this is 2009. This is the, these are the actual questions. And then if you look over here, here's how it's graded. There's the answer key. So every question, every essay question Mr. McKeever or I gave you came from this website, along with all the answers. So there they are. Yes, for the next test you know exactly where it all came from. So if you need to review how tests, or how the questions are put together, how they're answered, these are example responses. So they take sample responses. There's the thing again. And it shows you how the stuff's graded. So if you click around on that, you'll, you'll see how everything's done. So that's. Oh, it's like an epileptic. Oh, right. It's got to the Oh, Promethean boards. Oh, okay. Right. The computer is like an epileptic. Pretty. That's... That's where all the information comes from. That's where all the teachers across the camp, actually across the country, get their AP environmental science information and test questions and everything from. Them. All right. So most, all right, most four-year colleges and universities will accept a four or five on the AP environmental science class test, and most colleges will accept a passing score on the APES exam in lieu of AP biology, AP chemistry, AP physics. Now here's a key. This is why the fatter um, offers AP environmental versus AP biology, chemistry, or physics. Because remember I said at the beginning of the year that it's interdisciplinary. You have to know a little bit of biology. You have to know a little bit of chemistry. 
technically, and you're supposed to know physics. So it's a little bit of everything. And there's some history in there, some politics in there. Um, basically, what you can do, and this happened to two people last year who were seniors last year, and they came and told me it worked, and every year somebody comes and tells me that this way that I'm gonna tell you works to get credit. The reason you wanna do well on this, it's worth more to you than any other AP test. And the reason why is because everybody, no matter what school they go to in Florida, um, or any other place pretty much, you're gonna have to take some kind of science in college. It's gonna have a laboratory science requirement. And your laboratory science means that it has a lab attached to it. This counts as a laboratory science. Uh, so your laboratory science is usually worth more credits and you pay per credit. It's usually worth more credits than a regular class. So if, say you were to, I'm not saying, you know, prefer, uh, take one, read, study one versus another, but say you were to take AP English and you exempt from your requirement in English at your college, wherever you go, that's usually like three credits. You know, there's no lab attached to it. If you get a good score, meaning a four or five, sometimes a three, on the AP test in environmental science, that's worth more credits because it's a laboratory course. So what that means is in college, um, most courses either meet Monday, Wednesday, Friday from, you know, for like two hours, or they meet Tuesday, Thursday for three hours, and you get to pick your own schedule. A laboratory science course takes four hours in the afternoon where you have to go in and do a lab. So you can still meet your two Monday, Wednesday, Friday for two hours, or your Tuesday, Thursday for three hours, but then one afternoon a week, you have to go in and do a lab. So if you pass this, you get to have that whole lab taken away. You don't have to, you don't have to take that course. So it's not worth a specific course. You're not gonna go to a college and say, oh, I got a four or five on the environmental science thing uh, and you know, AP exam, and they're gonna say, okay, well you exempt from environmental science because environmental science is rarely a requirement in any degree unless you're majoring in science. Okay. What is the highest score you don't need? Five. Okay. Pretty. So what happens is you're not gonna go to your college you're not going to say, oh, I, I pass environmental science, I get to exempt from environmental science. It's not worth anything. It's th that's not worth anything, really, unless you're going to major in something that requires environmental science. What you do is you go to the school, and because it's interdisciplinary, it's considered your laboratory science course, so you exempt from your general ed credit. So if you're not going to be a science major, this is really important because you have to take a science course. If you get a four or five on this, then you don't have to take a science course in college. You get exempt from that course. Whoa. So it's really important, especially if you're not going to be a science major, to get a good score on this because it allows you to exempt that required um, laboratory course. What now, a lot of times, what's happened, it happens almost every year. It's happened to me at um, our students at FSU, it's happened at UM, UCF, where you initially show a four. You say, okay, I got a four in the AP exam, AP environmental exam, and they don't give you anything. They're like, oh, so what? And then what you do is you show them your syllabus, and if you ever need a syllabus, I have copies of it. They look at it, and then they'll go back and they'll change their mind and say, okay, yeah, this is a laboratory science course. We'll exempt you from your science credit. So you can argue it, and it almost always happens um, where you get the credit when originally they say, no, you don't get any credit. And I've heard this over and over again. Every year, uh, last year was um, Patrick Toombs' older brother. What's his name? Tall blonde guy. Yeah, Ben may have to bet someone. He's a full bunch. Full anyway, bunch he, 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 he did it. He came back. He said that initially the school that he went to, and make sure that he went out of state, they said, no, you're not going to get any credit. Then he said, well, here's the syllabus. You know, this is my laboratory science. And they went ahead and they said, okay, yeah, it will give you credit. So you can argue it. And the reason they don't often do it when you first show them your score is because this is a very new course. It was first started in 1998, and a lot of your admissions counselors and advisors in college don't really know what's in the course. So every environmental science course is put together a different way depending on how a teacher does it. Some of them are really easy where they just go in and they 
you know, color and play around. And yeah. It's like ecology, so that's not worth a college credit. But the way that it's designed in this class, it's very rigorous. That's why your grades are all low. It's very rigorous, so you're on. It's, it's going to be worth a lot when you get to college. So that's why you should spend time and try and get up four or five. Sometimes, I know FSU took the three from somebody one time. You understand? So it's worth two things. It's worth a laboratory science. So you get out of afternoon. You get out of an afternoon science lab. It's worth more credits, which means less money you're going to spend, versus a, uh, not say anything bad about other classes, but English, history, uh, government. Those are only worth like three credits. You're paying, you know, four hundred dollars a credit. Science course is four credits because it's got that lab. Sometimes it's worth two more credits. So you're going to save money, a lot more money, by exempting from this course, a science course, than other courses. Yeah. What's the lowest passing score for? The lowest passing score is three. Yeah. So that's the lowest. They won't always give you the credit though if you get a three. You need to try and aim for well, try to aim for five, but you want to try to aim for four. Some colleges will give you credit for three, but you usually need a four. Understand? Yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Sack. Can you change slides? All right. This is how it's broken down. Earth system of resources, and this is how I did the course, pretty much. We started out with Earth system of resources. We went to the living world, which is like biology and ecosystems and stuff. Then we did population. Then we did the land and water use, and so on. Um, second semester changed around a little bit, but and we're doing pollution last. But notice everything is 10 to 15 percent of the questions. That means the questions on the essay or the multiple choice. 10 to 15 percent of the questions come from each of these sections. But pollution is the most. Whoops. 25 to 30 percent. Pollution is the most highly questioned area. Uh, so it's 60 percent of your score. Even though I do 50-50. 60% of your score, the multiple choice. There's 100 questions, the recall. There's two types of multiple choice questions. There's regular ones, which are the ones I give you all the time. And there's sophisticated matching. Oh, sounds fancy. Sophisticated matching is basically they'll give you a map or a chart, and then they ask like four questions. From or refer back to figure one and answer this question, and then the next oh, question is to refer back to figure one and answer this, that's the scheme match. Free responses, 40% of your score, four questions with four, usually four or five parts, so it's A, B, C, D, sometimes E. Like I said, you're gonna have one document base, one data set, two synthesis and evaluation. You're gonna be asked, to, this is a general overview, you're gonna be asked to solve the world's problem by showing what you already know and using the knowledge to come up with reasonable solutions. That's what all of the essays have asked you to do. It has a problem, then you come up with an answer. And remember, there's usually not a right or wrong. If you can back up your answer pretty well, you'll get credit. All right, so how do you score four or five? No test taking tips and strategies I'm about to give you. Review only the science that you need to know and eliminate the fluff. These packets that I'm giving you over the next two weeks, that's all the fluff is taken out. The stuff I give you in class has a little more fluff to it. So this is basic stuff. Like, this is what's actually tested. You got what was actually tested in the class, but I went and gave you extra stuff because Thank you, it's exactly. nicer. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so everything in these packets, that's all you really need to know. So don't say anything else for what I give you in the packets. And if you really are lazy and you only want to study a little bit, I mean, I'd rather you study ways. a lot, but if you're really lazy, study those 115 ways, ways to go eight. So that's like the best thing to cram with. This is why I don't use Prometheus. All right, so these are the test taking strategies. You want to pace yourself. The three pass system, you may or may not know what that is. But uh, possible elimination, we've done that before. Aggressive guessing, word association, mnemonics, identify question type, the art of the ETS essay. Pace yourself. I mean, keep, keep track of the time. Luckily, all our rooms have a clock. 
the we have to whenever we proctor an exam, whether it's FCAT or EOC or AP, there's actually a script, and we read the script, and then it always has a section that says for the person who's proctoring, write down uh, five minutes or ten minutes before time's called. So you write that down and it says at this time, fill in the blank, announce that there's ten minutes left. Announce that there's five minutes left. So that's whenever you take a test and they're like, okay, you have ten minutes left. They're actually reading a script. And they're supposed, they have to, they're required to do that. It's just different during different tests. Sometimes they'll say ten minutes left, sometimes they'll say five minutes left. And actually have a little calculation box and say, okay, write the current time. Now add Hurry 50 up. minutes. <laughs> write the time. Now at this time, fill in the blank, and now it's five minutes left. She's been right. So anyway. So you're gonna have 90 minutes to answer four free response questions um, that contain four or five sections. Answer all the questions. It used to be two years ago and previous to two years ago, they would take points away if you got things wrong, kind of like the SAT, cool. but not anymore. So you want to make sure you answer all the questions, especially the multiple choice ones. Answer all of them. Um, so there's no point deductions. <laughs> all right, so the, this is called the three-pass system. If you're organized and know, if you have to judge whether or not you can do this. And if you're organized, do it. If you're not, keep doing what you normally do. So you're gonna read the questions three times. The first time you go through the, the test, you have to, if you know the answer, 100%, you know, answer it. If you're not sure, you move on to the next question. So you're gonna skip a bunch of them. You go through the whole 100 questions. Then you go to the second pass. So you answer all the ones you know 100%, no question, no doubt. Second one is reread the questions you're not sure about. If you think you can answer it, take some time and answer it. This is the process of elimination. Okay, I can eliminate this, I can eliminate this out of these three. I'm gonna choose C or whatever. So if you think you can answer it, take some time to answer it. If you have no idea, meaning you can't eliminate any of the answers, move on to the next one. Then the third pass, mark B for everything. B. That's which, or C, but use the same letter for every single one that you don't know. And you can't eliminate any of them. And I'm telling you to do it this way because statistically it's going to bump up your score. So, like I said, if you had a 100 question multiple choice test and you were to um, Christmas tree it, you get like 10 to 15% right, statistically. If you were to do all of the same letter, so all B, all A, all C, one of those in this case, you're going to say B, um, you get like 20%, 20 to 22% right. So on any multiple choice test, if you, have, if you can't eliminate any of the answers, put B. It's not that they give you B as more often. It's that if you stick with the same letter, you're statistically going to get a higher score than if you Christmas tree it. Okay? Thank you, Mr. Tucker. You're welcome. So first one, first time you go around, you answer the ones you know. Second one, you do process elimination. If you can eliminate some, then you answer those. Third time around, you mark B for everything you don't know. Don't Christmas tree it. Understand? Only do that if you're organized, meaning you're not going to mess up and put the wrong answer in the wrong, you know, answer spot in your multiple choice question. Not before. Yeah. Process of elimination, you know this, you've been doing it forever, keep doing it. All right, aggressive guessing, basically it's the same as process of elimination. Word associations, uh, memorize vocab words, I'm going to give you group words by association. Uh, remember that much of what you've learned crosses many chapters in the textbook. So the AP exam doesn't follow the textbook. You're not getting tested on the textbook. You're getting tested on the knowledge. So not everybody around the country has the same textbook. So the AP exam doesn't, tech or doesn't test you on the textbook. Don't read the textbook for your AP exam. Don't look at it. Don't read it. You don't need it. Don't read the textbook. Because the AP exam is testing out of these packets I gave you. Yeah, right, but not even once. Like, disregard the textbook, like 100% not even 
No, well, I remember what you know from the textbook. Sure, but I'm sure, saying sure, from sure, here sure, on sure, out, sure, except sure. for the next test, from here on out, just study the packets. Don't study the textbook. Yeah. Because what I'm giving you is the AP stuff, not the textbook yeah. stuff. So can you just cross check and see whatever we have in the Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, so example, ozone depletion is touched on in the intro chapters of our textbook. It's also in the air pollution chapters. It's in the global change chapters. So it's, if you notice, the topics are visited several times throughout the course. So we've talked about things over and over again. So keywords repeat over and over again. I'll associate the words together when answering questions. All right, I've got to stop the recording for this because I don't want this to be published.